everybody. Welcome to another fabulous episode of Thyroid Refresh TV. I'm Dana Bowman, and I have a frog in my throat. I'm going to take a quick <laughs> sip. Co-founder. And I'm Jenny Mahar, the other co-founder of Thyroid Refresh, and thank you so much for joining us today. We are so honored to be here with Dr. Anna Kabeka. Welcome, Anna. It is great to be here with both of you and your listeners. Thank you. I want to introduce all of you who do not know Dr. Anna Kabeka. She is an internationally acclaimed menopause and sexual health expert, global speaker, and pioneering promoter of women's health. She is Emory University trained and triple board certified in gynecology and obstetrics, integrative medicine and anti-aging and regenerative medicine. That is that's a lot. And she's the author of the new book, The Hormone Fix, Burn Fat Naturally, Boost Energy, Sleep Better, and Stop Hot Flashes, The Keto Green Way. We are so excited to have you on the show today. Thanks so much for joining us. It is a pleasure to be here with you again, Dana. Thank you so much for having me and Ginny. I'm looking forward to this conversation. Information yeah. needs to get out. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. So we would love to hear more about the hormone fix and you know this time in women's life of perimenopause, menopause, and postmenopause. And what what inspired you to create this book, The Hormone Fix? Yeah, that's a great question. One of the things is now I've been in uh, medicine for nearly 30 years, nearly three decades. And the one thing that I found out for sure is that women, we are generally confused about what's happening to our body, our hormones, and let alone how to fix it. And from my own journey, I was there too. Here I was at age like I'm 50, almost 53 now with a 10 year old. So there's a long story to this. But in wow. short, I at 38 was was diagnosed with early menopause, premature ovarian failure, infertility, told that I would not be able to have another child ever again. And, um, and that devastated, you can imagine that that just devastated me. There was nothing in my doctor's bag. That led me a journey, on a journey around the world looking for answers, literally around the world. I left my practice for a year in the hands of another very competent doctor, Dr. Deborah Shepard, and, and thanks to her, was able to just go on this healing journey. And I homeschooled my two of my girls at the time. They were seven and 10 on the journey. And it was um, an experience where I really feel like God's hand was in it every step of the way. And just kind of, you know, I met amazing healers from Native American shaman to Andean philosophers to some of the leading scientists in the world from Israel and New Zealand and Australia and France and Germany. And it was just serendipitous, really. So the information I learned really helped empower me again. And along with some, you know, major bruises and, 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 you know, um, challenges along the way, but I was able to healthfully conceive spontaneously without assistance at age 41, my daughter, Ava Marie, who is now almost 11, uh, actually book release, she turns 11. So it's like birthing her, Aww. you know, another birth. And, Love that. uh, Yes, and I reversed it and it really kept my hormones under control. Not only was that reversal process in, in place, but the, you know, getting re, you know, reestablishing normal hormone cycles, menstrual flows, et cetera, and also losing, I had been over 240 pounds, lost 80 pounds, and was able to keep that off for nearly, you know, a decade. And then I experienced what so many of my patients would tell me they my clients would come in and say dr anna i'm gaining 5 10 20 pounds and i'm not doing anything different and i know you hear that a lot with your thyroid clients right yes and it was the same thing for me and i would at that point i'd be like really well your thyroid's normal are you sure you're not you know just more sedentary are you sure you're not whatever but then when it happened to me it was like literally 5 10 20 pounds and here i was again you know in this perimenopausal state and I wasn't doing anything different, but that weight was creeping on. And any one of us who have been significantly overweight and have lost it, when you see that scale creeping up again, you don't know when it's going to stop. And so that's when I dug in. I'm like, okay, well, what am I missing? Let me go. Very low carb, ketogenic. But every time I did that or put my patients on it, 
they would, you know, say that they feel irritable. And I called it personally going keto crazy, you know, just feeling on edge, irritable, you know, I'm like, didn't like the way it made me feel. And you really can as a mom have that, right? And so that led me to figure out what the missing piece was. Well, in functional medicine, we know the power of detoxification. If we're not getting our greens, if we're not getting our alkalizers, we're not detoxifying well. And our liver is a key detoxification organ and our hormones are metabolized in the liver. So I just did something really simple. I started checking my urinary pH because I always told my clients to part of detox is to check your urinary pH. And I was persistently at a pH of five. Between stress and trying to be low carb, that was really throwing my body for a havoc. So my neurotransmitters were off. So all I did was add in alkalinizers and get my urinary pH above seven, then push my body into the fat burning stage of ketosis. And lo and behold, it was like a light bulb went off energized, clear, the brain fog lifted. You know, I had gained that 20 pounds. I lost 18 of them in six weeks and just felt fabulous. Felt, you know, in control of my life again, in control of my mind, my body, and my spiritual life too was enriched. And for me, it was like, wow, you know, has anyone else done this? So I looked in the research and there's an obscure paper tying the two or adding alkalinity with ketosis from 100 years ago at Cambridge. So ridiculous, you know, it's been so long. It's just kind of been just forgotten. And um, I, I started challenging some of my most difficult patients, my perimenopausal, menopausal, weight loss resistant, you know, uh, patients and put them on the program. It worked for them. And that's where it took me online to my magic menopause program and now to write this book. So because I want this information in everyone's hands, so many of us struggle, you know, at age 50, the average woman is on three prescription medications and we're just not feeling better, but that can be completely reversed naturally. That is, that is such a amazing. beautiful story, right? And what's so interesting to me is I'm thinking about my lifespan as you're telling me all these things. And I'm, and I'm like, wow, if I'd have only known. And I have a daughter too. And so I'm thinking, of course, she's not going to be interested in sitting down and reading the hormone fix tomorrow because she's 14. <laughs> but, but I want her to have these tools. I want her to have the book. I want her to know some simple things that had I just known a few things, I would have been able to ask the questions that so many of us just don't know. We just don't. And I will be turning 50 this year. And so I totally, totally, I totally get it. And um, I love how you went on your journey and self-discovery. It's beautiful. Thank you for sharing. Oh, you're very welcome. And that's the thing, you know, when we, you know, so many of us have a struggle, right? And that's where you've created thyroid refresh. You've created these amazing programs, reaching out to people because of your own personal struggles. I'm like, okay, God, use it for good, mm -hmm. right? Use it to help other people. And, and I really, I'm just really feeling blessed at this stage of my life to be able to do that because I know I saw my mom suffer. I saw her health decline after cardiac bypass surgery. She lived barely another decade and struggled and died prematurely at age 67. And that kind of sequential, and at the time of her death, she was on 11 prescription medications. And she was my best friend and mentor and role model, amazing chef, you know, and food as medicine philosophy. And, and not only did we, you know, uh, did she lose out on knowing her grandbabies, but they lost out on knowing her. And, and I want every woman to enjoy their grandchildren, to enjoy the quality of life, enjoy the activities that they want to enjoy for the rest of their lives, intimacy, relationship, all of that. And the road getting there, it is complex. You know, we understand that as people who are, are walking this path and will be on it for the rest of our lives, you know, and we hear that from our, our community as well. This is really, these are really complex issues to sort of untangle. And so I'm so intrigued by the, the combination, that magic combination you found of combining ketosis with alkalizing foods. Is that sort of the, the, the magic um, combo? 
Yeah, that's part of it. The big thing is like, what effect is what we're doing and eating having on us, having on our body, having on our physiology? And that was eye-opening for me because not just about what we eat, and this is why 99% of diets fail. According to the research, 99% of diets fail because it's not just about what we eat. It's how we live too. And urinary pH reflects that. So when we're stressed, cortisol's high, we get an acidic urinary pH. So part of my program is certainly let's get these low carb, you know, breast healthy, liver detoxing, alkalinizing foods, greens, herbs, et cetera, into our diet on a, on a daily basis. Let's also pull in the powerful you know, alkalinizing components of lifestyle, getting out in nature, sleeping well, thinking well. And and what I discovered, because it comes down to like, I have to break things down to its simple forms. That's why I loved research. You know, I want to understand what's going on. So for me, it was breaking it down. Okay, it's not just as a gynecologist, honestly, Ginny and Dana, I tell you, I would love to say that it's all about estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, even DHEA, but ultimately it's not. They are part of our hormone symphony, but the conductors, the conductors are insulin, cortisol, and oxytocin. And oxytocin's the major hormone. That's our hormone of love, bonding, and connection. So in my book, I go deep into a chapter on, on oxytocin because that, again, is the quality of life, the twinkle in our eyes, right? The skip in our step, the you know, smile on our face. So, so that's so powerful. And then understanding how insulin affects progesterone testosterone, right, et cetera, how cortisol affects oxytocin and affects inflammation, affects blood sugar, affects insulin, right? So if we, if we address the lifestyle and nutrition strategies that hit those, you know, key master hormones, all these other hormones, like, so, like all these other hormones in the symphony, let's say, behave better. Well, you look amazing. Yes, you do. <laughs> you do look amazing. You. And, and I'm thinking to myself, it feels empowering knowing, you know, you've heard this before from doctors and people, but that we do have some power over some of these symptoms. We do, and we can change, you know, and I'm thinking of my mom, and I'm thinking she's lost that pep in her step, and I don't want to be at her age and have had that missing for 10, 20, 30 years. I want to keep that moving forward. And so I'm excited to, I'm going to dive into the oxytocin chapter as soon as we get off the phone. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And that's so, so important. I mean, I can't emphasize it not enough and it's not soft science, you know, and I give the strategies. I'm a checklist person, so, you know, and I'm like, that's why sometimes I don't write them because I got to get everything done on that checklist. Right. So I created just quick checklist, quick quizzes and, and self inventories for you, for everyone to experience the discovery and be able to monitor the improvement because it's really important because when we stop doing what works it stopped work it stopped working right it stops working so so it's important that we just keep you know ourselves like okay well what was i doing you know okay this is this was working let's stay with this right and so i found that that's really important that i added that into my book as well as as key testing but i like what you said you know it's just about we worry so much we have this fear right now about getting older because we're seeing our generation ahead of us struggling they're you know on pills there we see increasing dementia we see our nursing homes um, filling up busting at the seams at least in our local community and the quality of life has, is significantly diminishing and and i don't we don't have to have that and I, unfortunately, I didn't know what I know now when I could have helped my mom, but I did have some of this information to help my father. So I'd love to share that story to give help and hope to us who are caregivers of our older parents, as well as, you know, whatever age we are and whatever we're dealing with, that we have that hope. So I'll share with you that when my father was 79, um, he, and so he came to visit us from Pennsylvania, flew in. So he took a wheelchair in the airport to come visit us cause he couldn't, couldn't walk. He was exhausted. And he, um, 
was visiting and he was cranky and stingy and irritable. And that was not my dad's personality. My dad's a World War II veteran, you know, stoic as can be, but just, you know, a, a enjoyed life, very funny, humorous, et cetera. And so I asked him, I said, dad, what's going on? He goes, Anna, I just don't feel good. I said, would you like me to call your doctors in Pennsylvania? I knew his heart doctor because he had taken care of my mom. And so at that point I was an Emory graduate and been in practice for a few years and already starting my functional medicine um, journey. And so he's like, yeah, absolutely. I get on the phone with his doctor and his doctor who I'd known for over a decade says, well, you know, Anna, he's 79 and he's really lived a good life. What? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And it's true. 79. Most people are just check, you know, you've lived a good life. All right. And I said, okay, thank you. And I asked my dad, I said, well, that, I said, do you mind if I manipulate some of his meds and just help him with some things? He said, no, of course not, you know? And so I, dad, you want me to help you? And he said, absolutely. I'd like to see 80. And he, um, I, I put him on my, you know, made him get alkaline, made him check his urine, took away his beer. And he went down from 120, he was diabetic with heart issues and all this stuff already, right? At 79. So he went down from 120 units of insulin a day to 30. Wow. 120 wow. units of insulin to 30 at age 79. In 30 days, he lost 30 pounds. And he went from being cranky and irritable and in a wheelchair, like being pushed around in a wheelchair, to out on the tennis court with the kids. Wow. He improved in just 30 days the quality of his life. And the good news is he lived another 12 amazing years, fully wow. on top of things, not irritable, enjoying life, not for, you know, just amazing memory, all of that, 91, and he passed away. And so, um, so at any age, we can improve our life, our quality of our life with the principles that I put forth in my hormone fix. I would say if it works for a menopausal woman, it's going right. to work for anyone. That's right. <laughs> That's right. That's an incredible story. I lost my dad in August oh, at 76. So it's an incredible uh, story. And how amazing to be able to do that for your father. Mm. If I could have done that. Mm. Yeah. So can you talk to our thyroid audience a little bit? Um, will menopause symptoms be different or amplified for those of us with thyroid issues? That's a good question. And there's, um, and it's not something I've seen. Typically, we're, you know, as thyroid, we've got our own set of, of, of problems, right? We've got our own fatigue, weight loss resistance, hair issues, and the list goes on. What I found is that working with my Keto Green Way, that we, we improve the thyroid response too. We improve our hormonal balance. So even if we're struggling with thyroid, we definitely need to really address these issues. So getting it, you know, using intermittent fasting as our friend, you know, stop snacking, the principles I put in my book to help us get into ketosis, as well as the key alkalinizing factors. Now, I will share, Ginny, that there are some, there's been a couple papers that said, ketogenic diet, not good for thyroid or causing thyroid issues. So I want to address that, especially for your audience, because I looked at the research that was um, based on this uh, statement from a dear friend and colleague, Dr. Alan Christensen. He goes, well, what about these papers? I was like, okay, well, I looked at the research. Again, I, I worked for the U.S. Navy. I did exercise physiology straight out of college, and I was doing research. And, and so I love the research paper because I love to run my own numbers. This is crazy, I know. So, um, so I looked at the research. And I said, first of all, these are done. The, these studies are done in children that are on um, goiterogenic anti-seizure medication, right? And mm -hmm. there's no, there was no quality control as far as exactly what's the ketogenic diet, what, and certainly there were no minerals or greens or alkalinizers or anything else going on. So, as far as children on um, 
goiter, you know, on anti-seizure medication, that we really need to look at the ketogenic approach when maybe, maybe the missing component right there is the greens. And it was a small, small but significant increase in those clients. So, so that's where that statement was coming from. That can't be applied to menopausal women. That can't be applied to women. Even if we're on anti-seizure medication, we've got to support our liver. We have to support our detoxification pathways. Any one of us, regardless of being on any medication, we have to support our liver, our detoxification processes to combat that issue, right? To have healthy hormonal balance because, you know, that's where all our hormones are metabolized. The majority of them are metabolized there. So for me and what I've seen, and that also that, you know, when Alan brought that up to me and I was like, okay, well, let me look at my client base that have been doing magic menopause now since, um, 2015. I have some clients that have been in it this whole time. And I looked at their TS, the ones that have been testing, including myself, our TSHs, our free T4s, our free T3, reverse T3, and look at those numbers. Everyone had improvement. Everyone had improvement with the exception of one veteran who was dealing with heavy metal detoxification. So her levels went bumped up, her TSH bumped up and then came right back down to optimal. So that was wow. the only like, wow, but free teeth. So I'm not seeing it. I see improvement in thyroid health. I see a reduction sometimes of thyroid medication. So I see that. So I feel there's a great synergy in this approach to really help our, um, to really help the challenges that we yeah. have with hypothyroid. But you know, we, we do have, sorry, Jenny, we do have on thyroid refresh, we do have, you know, the, th the thinking on the theme that everybody's different. We're, yes. we're very much bio-individual. And so there may be people out there that the keto diet doesn't work for. Now, whether it's because they don't have the right doctor helping them look at things like heavy metals and those kinds of things, you know, you just never know. Um, but we, we talk a little bit about how when I hear keto, I think zero carbs. And I'm not sure that's exactly true. We talked to um, our thyroid patients and, and me and Jenny a little bit yes. about that, please. I'd love to because, again, when I think ketogenic, I think getting our body into the fat burning state, mm -hmm. using ketones for fuel, especially for the brain, for our mental clarity, for our focus, for our concentration, so important. Um, especially for our brain, right? Getting our body into the fat burning state. So for me, that's ketogenic. And so look, that was my approach. And initially zero carbs, right? That's when I was 48 thinking, oh my God, I just got to lose this 20 pounds because that's going to be a hundred before I blink an eye, right? And so that's when I really felt this restriction. And it you know, we can say definitely if we're doing the bacon and butter and lots of meat, I mean, that's, that's not sustainable, at least not for women long term. That's not sustainable. And that's where my clients would say, I feel irritable. I feel edgy. I've hit a wall. I was losing weight, but now I'm hit at this plateau, you know, and like, I feel like I'm walking through sludge. I've heard all of those statements. And, and for me, it was going keto crazy. I'm like, can't do that. Right. So, um, so getting into the state of fat burning, while having healthy balance of carbohydrates, that's the key. That's the magic. Because for some of us, if we, and especially if we have thyroid disease, especially if we've yo-yo dieted a good portion of our life, we have metabolic issues, right? We have a slower basal metabolic rate. We, and, and it takes time to heal that. So for me, and the fix to this is having enough carbohydrates, enough low um, carbohydrate greens and alkalinizers to sustain a healthy urinary pH when possible, along with the lifestyle issues, to then get our body into ketosis, that fat burning stage with a cushion so that we do it healthfully. That's the difference for me. But you can definitely be ketogenic uh, by fasting completely, right? That gets us into a state of ketosis. We just burn out the glucose that's available to our cells so our body goes into the fat stores. So we can do that by getting into ketosis, intermittent fasting, extended fasting. That's a way. And again, I will tell women that if we have been metabolically compromised, you know, from thyroid, from just a slow metabolic rate, you know, yo-yo dieting, high stress lifestyle, it can take us a while to then acclimate to getting into ketosis. So in a healthy way. So be patient, 
be persistent and, and, you know, don't give up. So, so that's where like the ketogenic, there's now, you know, I speak at KetoCon, I'll be speaking there in, in the end of June this year. And I love it because I get to hear all different scenarios that are going on. And, and the, the organizer, Brian, he's carnivore keto. I'm like, you never have vegetables? He's like, nope. And I'm like, well, maybe men do this better than women. But, yeah. you know, or there's women with rare exception that could do that. But for right. hormone balance, healthy mind, um, that's, yeah, that's not sustainable, but I can see men and women are different. We don't have the studies in women, you know, other than my, you know, what I've run in my online program now with hundreds of women, thousands of women going through it. We don't really have studies in women long-term, especially menopausal women looking at, you know, these, these variances. So can you describe what a typical day looks like for you food wise? Yes, absolutely. So for example, after uh, I usually I'll start with my evening because I like to eat dinner when Ava comes home, my daughter, who will be 11, like I mentioned, when she comes home from school, because the others are in college. um, I like to have a dinner by five o'clock, by five, by six o'clock, you know, if she's had basketball practice or something, then we try to have dinner by six at the latest. Because one thing we know is that our insulin levels increase exponentially after 7 p.m. So the same meal we eat at 5 p.m. will have 70% less insulin secretion than the one at 7 p.m. Hence, it's healthier for our body, our metabolism, less is going into storage mode. So at 5 p.m. last night, I had made a... um, I had a grass-fed beef, and I had just put it in the crock pot in the morning with uh, just a, a handful of carrots, some onions, and lots of garlic, and put that in and served that with a side of asparagus, and healthy side of asparagus yesterday, and then topped with some microgreens and mineral salt and herbs in there. So that was dinner last night that cooked all day. And this, and then, um, so breakfast typically, when I break fast, is typically by 9 or 10 a.m. And after, after my workout, and that's typically my keto green smoothie. And it can be made, I use my keto green protein mix and Mighty Maca Plus as a superfood. So using a zero gram sugar protein shake, or you can use almonds, nuts, seeds. I love that as a good protein and healthy fat source. So a keto green shake, say um, a half to a quarter of an avocado, maybe a teaspoon of MCT oil, a handful. I don't measure anything, Jenny. You would not like my recipes are, I made this. (laughs) And so, the sign of a true chef. Oh man! In my book, it was that was the most painful part. We're getting those recipes down. Oh my yeah. gosh! It's so a, a whole different science. A whole different science. A handful of nuts and then some um, chia seeds and flax seeds for us because that helps with fiber. The lignans help with estrogen detoxification, and then water and um, a hand, whatever grains I have. So there's some broccoli sprouts. I love to throw those in. Baby kale or spinach that can go in. Um, the Nutribullet and I blend that up and that's a perfect breakfast for me, right? And uh, lunch, if I um, will typically do, a, I'm trying to think what I had yesterday for lunch. Oh, I had a salad with, um, lunch yesterday was a little big for me, but it was a salad with a beef patty on it. So lots of beautiful different you know, organic greens and then some uh, sliced cherry tomatoes, onions and um, olive oil salad dressing. Yum. That sounds so, delicious and satisfying yeah. and healthy and and um, nutrient dense. Yes. It's so important. The earlier we eat, the older we get. And, you know, I, and I love that because one thing I always hear from my clients is the midnight cravings. You know, the late in the evening, I got to have something to eat. So I always say, think fat and fiber at five. Just that little mnemonic, I need to have something, like I need to have something fat and fiber at five. Let me fill up then and, you know, you'll be good. You'll be able to then not have that evening cravings. What kind of results can people expect from following the Keto Green Protocol? 
Well, on, from a laboratory analysis, because I like the numbers, we see an improvement in hemoglobin A1C, so better blood sugar control. We also see an improvement, and this I'll tell you what a client said to me. Her name was Kathy. She was a nurse, at, she is a nurse in um, a kidney dialysis center and charge nurse. So she would go to work all day, right? Come home exhausted and just be on the couch. And so just in a few weeks following the keto green way, she just would, she stated that her energy was so improved. She had a horse on her property that was a championship horse that she used to ride, but hadn't ridden him in two years. He was, she was ready to sell him. And I'm a horse person here in South Georgia, love horses. So I was just brokenhearted with that. And she said, I am out there riding him again. There's not a day goes by that I'm not outside again, riding him or, you know, with him out in the field. And she goes, we were going to sell that horse. And she says, not only that, you know, I was, I was on the couch. I wasn't living my life. My family annoyed me and I believe I annoyed them. And she goes, now, not only do I love them more, but they love me more mm. and we're doing things together. Wow. That for me is like, that's, that's the change. That's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's that's the quality exactly. of life. Right. And it's, it's what we all want, whatever path we're on. That's what we're all striving for is, you know, optimal health and quality of life so that we can enjoy our time here, right? Yes, 100%. Mm -hmm. well, we are so excited uh, about the hormone fix. Uh, burn fat naturally, boost energy, sleep better, and stop hot flashes the keto green way. Thank you so much, Dr. Anna Kabeca, for being here with us today. Um, is there, uh, I wanted to um, ask you to maybe tell our listeners about your ebook um, that they can yes. sign up for. Yeah, definitely want, I would invite all the readers to get the book, The Hormone Fix, and let me know how you love it. I did create a little companion ebook, just eight page with a graph of what's going on to our hormones, with our hormones as we're aging from like birth till, you know, beyond, right? And so uh, it, that's a really, it's just a quick and easy guide with an explanation. You, we hear, we throw out the words hormones. We throw out the word estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, DHA. I want people to know what that is. And so that's a quick and easy ebook with a good visual and some quick get started points in that. Awesome. Um, okay. Can I ask one more question before we sign off today? Please. What do you think with all your incredible expertise, your personal journey, everything you've seen, all the patients and, and success stories you've seen, you know, come through your life and be part of your professional path, what do you feel needs to change the most about traditional menopause treatment? Mm, well, I think one thing is we can't expect other people to do it for us. We have to reclaim that power, like what you said earlier as at the beginning of our discussion. We have to reclaim our power and our privilege over this body that we have and the temple of our spirit. So we have to reclaim that. Don't give away our power, number one. And that's really important. Number two, you know, way back when, in 2000, I was in solo practice here in Southeast Georgia, National Health Service Corps Scholar, and I was in the grind of it. But one patient took her time to bring me a copy of Christine. Ann Northrop's book, Women's Bodies, Women's Wisdom. And that just gave me pause to say, huh, this is another, you know, I, you know, ivory tower trained OBGYN and, and she's saying there's more to it. That's, that just opened my mind to the possibilities plus reinforced what I'd grown up believing with food as medicine and there's, and trusting our own intuition. So that led me on a journey. I hope this book will be that for other physicians. Mm. Well, we're so excited about it. And congratulations on the hormone fix. Um, I hope you all the listeners out there will check it out. And um, thank you so much for being here with us and sharing your wisdom and your knowledge with us today. Thank you so much for having me. Okay. Bye, guys. We'll see you on another episode. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, guys. Mm -hmm.